This is probably one of the most vulnerable videos that I've made. <laughs> I might delete this later, but I figured why not? Because I don't know. I'm just tired of the performance side of things, right? Like tired of the constant upkeep with the algorithms, tired of the constant, we got to make sure that we got enough likes and followers. And don't get me wrong. Like I've never really been the type that, or at least on my older side, like I, as I've matured, has never really been the type to like kind of focus on that. The older I get and the more I heal within myself. But I woke up today and I just felt so many different feelings of anxiety, feelings of, I don't even know if it was anxiety, but it was just like this awkwardness that I was feeling in my body. And so I started with like praying and then I started with journaling. And as I was journaling, I realized uh, something that I really wanted to talk about today. Uh, it's just been on my heart heavy. And I think that it would help so many other people um, just to kind of start talking about it and having these conversations around uh, detaching ourselves from the outcome of things, right? When we work so hard for things, we oftentimes have this internal expectation of what we would like the end result to be. And if that end result does not turn out that way, we are oftentimes highly disappointed. We're oftentimes highly discouraged and we don't want to continue forward. And so today I released a song. It's called You Ain't What You've Been Through. And I didn't even tell anyone. I've been kind of doing this lately just because I just want to be free in my creativity. I want to be free in the things that I make without having to worry about how well is it going to perform or are people going to like it? What are people going to say? And then looking at algorithms, looking at how many views something got, looking at how many likes or comments or shares something got to essentially validate if it's good or not. I was just really tired of that. And so I just started dropping stuff. And as I dropped this song today, I woke up this morning and I felt angst about it because I remembered I dropped the song. <laughs> And I remember I have no promotional plan. I don't even think I told my fans anything about it. And I started to kind of feel worried. And as I began to assess like what was going on within my body and just kind of feeling through my feelings that were happening, I realized that I was really worried about the outcome attached to the end. And so I started asking myself, well, what is the end that you're looking for? And of course, when we put our heart into something, when we put our um, diligence and our abilities and ambitions into something, we want to see the outcome to be good, right? And I realized that I had an internal measure of what good looked like. Uh, and oftentimes that measure or that meter was set by other people. Meaning, what are other people going to say about this project? What are other people going to say about this song? Am I going to get enough streams? Am I going to get enough people to buy in? And I realized that I had an expectation for this song um, that I never communicated with myself. Right. Like and that expectation for was for it to, for me to wake up and I had a bunch of streams and things like that. And I purposely put myself in this situation. Right. Because here's the thing. I didn't promote the song. <laughs> Nobody knows about the record. <laughs> and it's been beautiful to be able to sit in that place and just create and release something because I like it and not because it might be what everybody else wants. Um, but then I have to also deal with the internalized part of it where I have been attached to. And this is me in the past. It was really bad before I started going on my healing journey where my meter was perfection. Everything that I dropped, everything that I did had to have a level of perfection. Now, how do you define perfection? You really can't. Perfection is not a thing. It's a myth. It does not exist. But oftentimes we attach ourselves to what our idea of perfection is that doesn't even come from us. It comes from other people. External validation, meaning if people applaud it, if people say it's good, then it must be good. Right. If people if we get a certain amount of response from external people or um, ex different communities or whatever the case may be, then we use that as a measure to validate whether something is good or not. 
And so as I was journaling, I just started realizing like, yo, E, you have been attached to a certain outcome and that outcome has been defined by other people. How do you take that back? How do you take your power back? And the reason why I say how do you take your power back is because I've oftentimes felt like powerless in those moments. Like I didn't have the authority to say whether something is good or not because I'm putting this art out into the world. I'm putting this piece of me, this vulnerable part of me out into the world and people can decide whether or not they like it. And the truth is, is that it doesn't matter. But the reality of our oftentimes our situation is we care so much about what people think that it does matter. Right. And I think having a certain level of care it's OK. Right. It's not bad to like care about what people think. But I think that when caring about what people think stops you from being able to be your authentic self or to do something that you love, that's where it begins to be a problem. And for me, that has definitely been a problem in the past where I would not do something because I was afraid of what other people thought. And if I were to dig deeper it would go into this thing of abandonment, thinking that if people didn't approve of me, then they would leave me. If people didn't like something that I did, then they would stop associating with me or they wouldn't uh, value me anymore. And I lived in that space for a very long time, right? And so as I woke up this morning, I started to kind of feel those feelings again. It was different because I hadn't felt those feelings in such a long time. And so what I decided to do was allow those feelings to be here and talk to those feelings. And so when I started feeling afraid about what other people would think or what other people would say about the song, I had to remind myself, of who I was and understanding that at the end of the day, did I like it? That was the first question. Did you like the song E? I was like, yeah. Did that song speak to you? Yeah. Then that's what matters. At the end of the day, you put out work and you put out art that speaks to you. And the people who like it, they like it. The people who don't, they go find whatever it is that they like. But you have to stop attaching your validation to other people's opinions because other people's opinions is none of your business. And people don't have the power to validate something that they they did not create in the first place. And so for me, what it looks like detaching myself from these external outcomes is daring to be free, daring to do the things that make me uncomfortable, daring to do the things that other people might say, oh, this is not good or oh, I can't believe she did that and choosing to show up. And choosing to say, no, nah, I'm here because I want to be here. I'm doing this because I want to do this and taking ownership and pride in that. And so detaching myself from the outcome is releasing whatever the end result is going to be. That is what it's supposed to be. Whatever the end result is going to be, I accept and receive it because I'm doing this out of love and out of joy and not losing sight of the purpose of why I started something in the first place. And I think that can be applicable across the board. I'm an artist, but anybody who has goals or ambitions or dreams, we get so attached to what the end out the end outcome or the result will be. And I've been learning that enjoying the journey is the process, like enjoying the process. That's where the value of the journey is going through the process, not necessarily being so focused on the outcome, being focused on the outcome. The outcome doesn't exist yet. And we're oftentimes stressed about something that doesn't exist, something that hasn't happened, or we're stressed about something that has happened in the past and we don't want that to happen again. And that's where a lot, oftentimes a lot of our anxiety and depression breeds because we are so uh, absent. We're not present in this moment. And so detaching myself from the outcome is forcing me to stay present in the moment and staying present in the moment has been where I found the most peace. It has been where I found the most joy. So this song, You Ain't What You've Been Through, is truly about, like the song has a different meaning, but the reason why I dropped it the way that I dropped it was truly because I want to be free from expectations of myself. At the end of the day, uh, people can't put expectations on me that I don't allow them to put on me. And so being able to be free from my, my, from my own expectation, being able to be free from my own expectation is what I'm aiming for. Because at the end of the day, I want to be able to enjoy life with contentment and not always having to feel the need to control the outcome. 
And that's another thing. It's induced by fear, um, having these unrealistic expectations and attachments to the perfection or a perfected outcome is oftentimes for me has been rooted in fear, fear of not being good enough, fear of being alone, fear of not being accepted, fear of not being a part of community. If I were to stick out so much to the point where people don't accept me, then what will they say? Right. Will they accept me? Will they bring me into their community or will they ostracize me? And coming from the places of um, just not feeling like I was a part of community, feeling ostracized before, uh, that is definitely a real experience that I know, not just me that I've had, but also other people. And so I don't know, like this journey of what you've been through or you ain't what you've been through releasing this track. I'm choosing not to really pay attention to the numbers and I'm going to choose to enjoy the journey, enjoy and pay attention to what the people are actually saying, sharing their story or hearing their stories about how the music is really impacting their lives. And so, you guys, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for showing up every time, listening to the music. I don't sometimes understand how big of an impact that I'm making because oftentimes I'm just a giver at heart. Like I care about people. I care about the wellness of the world. And I just want to continue to put things into the world that help people to love themselves, to experience the true a nature of God's love for them, regardless of what their circumstances are, regardless of what uh, other religious affiliations or organizations may try to tell them. I just want people to experience love because they were made, you are made from love and you are made for love. And so that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I want to experience life outside of the confines of algorithms, outside of the confines of numbers and performance. That's why I got on this and I don't even like really put on clothes. I'm just here showing up in my authenticity, sharing with you my journey and and talking about the things that really matter to me. Being an artist is one of the best privileges I could have had. And I used to despise it for so long because You know, I always said I didn't want to be a rapper and things like that, mostly because I just don't like the music industry. Um, It's just not the best industry. It's a pretty toxic industry. And so I had my struggles with that, wanting to be accepted, wanting to be validated. And I feel like I've finally grown to a place where... I don't know. In some ways, I feel like I beat the game and not necessarily beat the rap game, but beat the game of life. Like, I feel like I'm I'm on level like 35 or something. And it's like four more levels and I'm almost there. I don't know. (laughs) But I say that to say, like, I find myself in this place of just truly desiring freedom of expectation, freedom of performance and just wanting to live a life not necessarily having an expectation that everything is going to be easy, but having the expectation of no expectations. I don't know. That probably doesn't even make sense. Maybe I need to cut that part out, but releasing myself of the obligations to perform, releasing myself of the obligation to be perfected or to be perfect, releasing myself of the unrealistic standards that nobody has really put on me, but I put on myself and I've looked for other people to validate that. Right. And so you ain't what you've been through is a song that speaks to me because I think on my journey, um, I've noticed a lot of us have went through a lot of crap and it's very easy to take on the identity of what you've been through. It's very easy to become so comfortable with your pain that you now have befriended it in a way. Right. And I truly believe that pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. And what that means is that you're going to go through pain. Things are going to be hard. Things are going to be difficult. You are going to experience life. And when life start life and life is going life, life knows how to fight. Life knows how to hit back. But the truth is, is that you can hit back too. you don't have to suffer in the pain that you've experienced. You can evolve from those moments. You can evolve from the things that happened to you in the past and you don't have to live in fear about what will happen to you in the future. There is an ability and a way to be so present 
right now and so in love with the life that you are experiencing and so in tune with what's going on in your actual environment in this moment that you can experience peace. Um, that's the journey that I've been on. And so you ain't what you've been through talks about just that. I mean, it, it isn't as like, ooh, <laughs> or like metaphorical. It really says you ain't what you've been through, so let go of the pain. You ain't what you've been through, so let yourself change. You ain't what you've been through. You ain't what you've been through. That's essentially what it's talking about, meaning you're going to go through things, but that doesn't define who you are. You don't have to allow that pain of what someone else did to you continue to be a weight or a burden on your shoulder. You don't have to allow the pain of what someone did to to continue to cripple you. And I know some people are going to say, well, Erica, you don't know what they did. Like, how do you move past these things? And the truth is, is that moving past something looks different for everyone. And you're right. I don't know what those people did to you. I don't know your life experience. But what I do know is that you are strong and that you are capable of anything, anything that you put your mind to. And I know, I know that that sounds cliche. Trust me, I do. But when I started actually understanding who I am and the authority that I actually have, who I am and and the God that lives in me, not just lives in me, but the God that I actually am, that helped me to realize that there is nothing that I am am able or not able to do. I am capable of anything that I put my mind to. I am more powerful beyond measure, meaning there is no amount of pain in life afflicted upon me that will break me, that will break my soul, that will break who I am, a God having a human experience. And so as I begin to understand my own divinity, divinity, as I begin to understand my own truth, I started to realize that pain is a part of my human experience, but it ha doesn't have to define me. And I want other people to know that as well. <laughs> mm. Okay, it's a lot of mucus there. <laughs> and so this week, my focus is going to be on not worrying about the end results. Enjoying the moment. So as you guys are listening to the music, I hope y'all enjoy the song. I truly believe that it's one that will be life changing for those who can really grasp the concept. And I love you guys. Let me know in the comments if you all want me to do more of these. This was just really the spur of the moment off the fly. Um, it was not planned at all. I just felt it this morning. So I turned on the camera and I just said, let me just have a conversation. Uh, but yeah, I love you guys. And if you want to continue on this journey with me, I invite you to join the inner circle. The inner circle gives you perks like listening to these songs before I actually release them to the public. You all get to vote on them as well. And then I also do weekly calls with my fans. Um, those who are really serious about wanting to go deeper in their wellness journey. We do every a call every Wednesday morning and just to help you to start your morning off right, to help you to get back into a meditative and a reflective state, to help you to prioritize you at the end of the day. So if that is you, if that's something that you want to do, you want to be a part of, I wholeheartedly invite you to be a, come along the journey. We have retreats as well as live shows that we're doing in states. You can find all of that stuff in the links in the description. I love you guys.